Hi there and welcome to my channel. I'm Jennifer, this is A Country Life, and I love to cook, I love to be in the kitchen, I love to film, I love to talk. So here we go, we're gonna do meals of the week, and it's Sunday night. I am making pork tenderloin. There are only going to be five of us home for supper. This claims it's supposed to serve six people. We'll see how that all goes. I also am going to be making this cauliflower bake, and this was just something I picked up at Aldi, frozen, and that's what it looks like when I took it out of the bag. I'm gonna bake that for, it says on the back for about 50 minutes. I also have some long grain wild rice and I thought I'd make two packages of this because this says that three servings per box and so six servings, I'm hoping that that should be enough for all of us tonight. I think the kids are going to like this. I mean, this is seasoned and I know they really like plain white rice but I'm hoping that the seasoning on here is not too strong and that they still like this. So this here, this long grain rice, needs to cook. Um, I'm sure just about everybody has made something like this before. It says, oh, it says it should be done in the microwave. What about on that side? Stove top. It says that it needs to simmer for about 25 to 30 minutes. So I think how I'm going to do this is I'm going to get the cauliflower bake in. And I'm actually going to use, um, like, I call this my air fryer, but it's really just like a big toaster oven. It does all the things. So I have it set to bake, 400 degrees. Once it preheats, I'm going to put this in and get that going in the air fryer, but on bake. <laughs> in the oven at 350 degrees for 35 minutes, I'm going to get the pork tenderloin. And once I put the pork tenderloin in, I will get started on the rice. There was also a bread sale at church today, so there's like a boys group, and a couple times a year they do a big bread sale. So we bought, this is whole wheat bread. Peter just put a, uh, took a slice off of that. This is the first time they've done sourdough. It smells very, very good. So I think between these two loaves of bread, we'll slice that up for supper, some bread and butter. All right, everything has come together here. I did have a little corn left in the refrigerator from when I made taco soup the other night, so I thought I would use up that as well for supper here. Here is the rice. This did go for longer than the 25 minutes it said. It took a long time to soak up all the uh, liquid. This is the cauliflower bake. I noticed that I probably should have put it in, in a little bit smaller um, baking dish here because see how this like side got a little bit burnt there? But I haven't tasted it yet. I have no idea how that is. I've been slicing bread off of the um, bread that we picked up at church this morning and every time I slice bread it keeps disappearing. And then I also have the pork tenderloin over here and this did have to go, it was just 1.6 pounds and it did have to go for uh, 45 minutes to finally get it to be all the way done. So I just am letting it rest for a couple minutes. We're going to slice this and get all of this served up. You're giving it a thumbs down? No. You don't like rice? I made two no boxes rice. of rice thinking we would need two boxes. I like it. Oh good. It looks like the bread. <laughs> Joe's finally finding something he likes, meat. Is that going to shake off of there for you? Here. Welcome back, next day here. And today's meal is actually, was actually requested by Brenda. So I have a membership community. So here at YouTube, they offer memberships. It's a way for um, viewers to support their favorite channels, just a little bit extra. So anyway, I have a membership community here. And every once in a while, uh, I will put a question out or something or ask them if there's something that they would like to see me make or, you know, from one of the cookbooks or something new or whatever. Anyway. 
Here we go. Today's recipe was requested by Brenda. And let me show you what all she requested. BLT pasta from page eight of cookbook two. That was kind of the stipulation when I said, is there anything that you guys want to see me make from cookbook two? Uh, chicken bacon ranch, also from cookbook two, page 26. Soft sandwich buns. I think this might, I must have wrote something down wrong. I don't think those would be on the same page. Soft sandwich buns also in cookbook two, and then rhubarb crisp. Now, and Evelyn, she had requested meatloaf. That's gonna be on another day, uh, probably a different video, not this week. Actually, the BLT pasta salad is on page eight, so that must have been my mistake there. I'm just going to put together a half recipe of BLT pasta salad. Typically in the summer, I'll do a full recipe if we're having a picnic or a cookout or something like that, and there's gonna be a lot of people here, um, but, with it really just being five of us. I mean, Sam will probably take some of this for lunch tomorrow, so yeah. Anyway, I'm just gonna make half a recipe. So I am I already have the bacon. I cooked up the bacon in the oven this morning, and this is gonna be, it looks like people have been eating this bacon. Have you guys been eating this? Nope. Joe, yes. were you eating the bacon? Yes, I did. Yeah, it looks like someone's been going by and eating bacon. Well, anyway, half of it is supposed to be for the BLT pasta, and half of it was supposed to be for the bacon chicken ranch, but now it looks like I'm running very, very low. I did cook it to crisp, just because when I'm making it to add to a salad, I like the bacon to be crispy and not a little softer and chewier, which is how we would normally eat it if we're having, like, bacon and eggs. All right, so what I have to do here is get a half of a box well, it says a one pound in the boxes. Actually, a bow tie are now 12 ounces. So I'm going to get a little over a half a box of my pasta cooked up, and I'm going to mix together some zesty Italian dressing, some creamy ranch dressing. I have the bacon. I have a couple Roma tomatoes that I'm actually going to chop for this that I want to use up, and then I'm going to wash up, um, let's see, romaine, romaine leaves, not the hearts, wash dried. I have a regular bag of just like salad mix that I'm going to use for this and I do have red onion I'll get chopped up and then I'll just put all this together. It's going to be really easy here for for that meal. I also for the bacon chicken ranch I really needed boneless skinless chicken breasts but I didn't have that so I do have one a leg quarter in my instant pot waiting to go and I was just running some cold water over this chicken to get two more of these leg quarters off because for the slow cooker chicken bacon ranch sandwiches, what I would normally do if I was working with the perfect ingredients today is I would be putting boneless, skinless chicken breasts raw into my slow cooker with the remaining ingredients and I would let that, let that cook down all day. And then I would just sort of um, put my, my tongs in there and as I would move my tongs around, that would break up the chicken, but I don't have boneless, skinless chicken breasts. And part of my Meals of the Week videos is not just to show, um, you know, the meals that we have when things are always perfect and you just grocery shopped and you have all the exact ingredients, um, but sometimes it's just to show that you can use a recipe and you can change it up a little bit. So my plan here is to get my chicken cooked in the Instant Pot and then when it's just cool enough to handle, I'll strip all that meat off the bones and then I will mix that together with the cream cheese, the dressing mix, and the bacon, and the cheese, and then I'll just warm that all. I'll probably just do it right in the Instant Pot, like, you know, pour out um, what I don't want and put everything back in there and just keep it warm until supper time, and that's how we will serve it. It doesn't have to be cooked from raw in the in, or in the slow cooker. It's gonna work just fine.
the salad is coming together. I have the dressing mixed in here with some salt and pepper. I also already have the tomatoes that I chopped up. And I chopped up just a little bit of red onion. My, my red onion was only this big, and I did half of that. So just a little bitty red onion. And then I put in some lettuce. I am going to go see if I have some more lettuce out in our garage fridge because I do want this to be heavy on the lettuce. And then I did decide to do the whole... Um, I'll turn that up just a smidge so it keeps boiling a little harder. I decided to do the whole box of of the bow tie pasta because I need eight ounces and that was 12 ounces. And what am I going to do with four little ounces of pasta left over? And then the kids can just have that as like butter noodles. I can put it away in the fridge and they can have it tomorrow for lunch or something like that. So decided to do that. When this is done, I'll take this out, rinse it in really, really cold water. And then I'll let them drain for quite a while. And when they're totally cool, I'll add them to the salad. I'll put some uh, saran wrap over this, pop it in the fridge, and it can blend or settle in until supper tonight. Okay, next up is the soft sandwich buns. So I'm going to get this going in my bread machine here. I already have the egg in there, and I have the two tablespoons of butter. And I just want to show you that even though the recipe calls for one and one-fourth cups of milk, I have milk and I could use milk. I just wanted to show you today that it is okay to utilize water. And later when I put in the flour, I will add in the dry milk. And let me tell you how much dry milk I'm going to use. Let me just look here really quick. Um, I'm going to use just a little over one fourth cup of the dry milk powder. And I'll put that in when I put in the flour. I'm gonna do a scant one quarter cup of sugar just because sometimes when I make these I've noticed that both Warren and Joe have said boy these seem a little too sweet so okay I did that and I'm going to put in three-fourths of a teaspoon of salt and then three and three quarters cups of bread flour Make sure you fluff your flour. Not a whole lot of yeast, just one and a quarter teaspoon of yeast. And then I'm going to put in my one fourth cup, actually a little bit over, so kind of a heaping one fourth cup of milk powder. I'm gonna put this in my bread machine, set it to the dough cycle. All right, I finally got three of the leg quarters thawed off of that brick of chicken. I'm going to close that up, lock the top, plug this in. Set this to high pressure. Let's go pressure. Well, first, I guess it's going to have me do minutes. But I'm going to go 18. Um, and then we need to go. Whoops, that's still giving me there. Pressure level. High. We'll just go the 20 minutes. That'll be just fine. I want that to pressure cook down, get all the meat nice and soft. I'll strip it off the bone when it cools, and we'll make that into chicken bacon ranch. I just put the chicken back in for another five minutes because I just didn't think that it was quite as done as I wanted it to be. I really want that meat to be falling off the bone. Okay, so now I just got out the... Oh, I guess that's pressurized. <laughs> I just got out the dough, and so I'm going to separate this into about 18 pieces. I'm try, going to try to get them as equal as possible, shape them into a bun shape, and get them rising. I tried to get those really even. I see, like, this one's pretty big, <laughs> but that's all right. Um, it's kind of nice to have a few rolls of different sizes, of different sizes, um, because sometimes the kids just want a small one. All right, I'm going to cover these up and let these, uh, I'm going to let these rise, and it's 4.30 right now. 
I'm going to let these rise for about probably 20 minutes, come back, check on them, and then get those in the oven to bake. I want to show you what I have going here for the slow cooker chicken bacon ranch sandwiches. I'm really changing up how I go about doing this today just because, like I said, I did not have the boneless skinless chicken breast that I had wanted. And then in the, I have this set to slow cook right now, my instant pot, and in here I have some of the broth. I saved some because if I had started from raw chicken, it would have created um, like kind of cooked up some juices and that. So I have that in here and I have one block of cream cheese. I'm only doing about a half a recipe because I just don't think I'm going to need quite the huge batch that it would be. And then I have one pouch of ranch dressing and I'm just starting to put the chicken in. So I'm just going to kind of stir this around because I want all of this cream cheese here to get melted in with the like kind of the broth that the chicken created. I didn't save all of it, just a little bit of it, just enough to kind of give it a little juiciness. And this is so hot, I'm having a hard time pulling it, so I'm just going to give it about 15 minutes to cool. I'm going to come back, and then I will continue to pull that off. I'm also, I had to cover up my bacon because I think people were going by. That's all the bacon that's left here, so I'm going to chop that up or break it apart. I'm going to put that into the crock pot as well, but I think I'll do that at the very end so it still has a little bit of a crunch to it. I also have to pull out some sharp cheddar cheese and kind of um, and mozzarella. I like to mix those two together for this. just pulled the rolls out and I should have flattened them a little bit more because they kind of just puffed up into little balls but it'll be fine they'll still taste um, delicious we'll still be able to put the meat on them it'll be just fine and if we choose to just we can just make eat these as like a dinner roll with butter we can just serve the bacon chicken ranch on the side if we'd like All right, I wanted to give you a little update on the supper here. Um, Brenda, I did not get the rhubarb crisp made. I just could not get a dessert made today. There was, um, the kids were actually making some little box mix uh, clearance cookies that I had gotten after Christmas. So anyway, we had some dessert. I just could not, could not get time to do the rhubarb crisp. Peter, are you trying to give me rabbit ears or something? No. Uh, you were doing something. All right, so the... Chicken bacon ranch was really, really delicious this way. I would actually do it again this way, is just use some already cooked chicken. Like if I had some cooked chicken in the freezer and I was like, what do I want to do with it? I would definitely do this. Just warm up some chicken stock. Hey, <laughs> warm up some chicken stock. Just add that right to a crock pot with the cream cheese, the ranch packet some chicken broth and then because you you need to have a little bit of liquid if you're not starting with the raw meat and then also what else the bacon and then add the cheese at the end i kind of just top the cheese over it and just kind of let it melt onto it at the end it was so good and this is all we have left so we really um we really did a number on that the rolls were really, really good too. Last time I made them, the kids, at least Joe, was kind of like, he took a bite and he didn't he didn't want one. So I don't know what it was last time. And I'll look at This time, the chicken. <laughs> I mean, the rolls were good last time, but the chicken is delicious on them. You like the chicken with that? And Peter's yeah. having an, another roll. So 18 rolls, and this is all we have left at the end of supper. So... I, I know someone had mentioned something about the soft sandwich rolls, thinking that they were a little bit dense of a, of a bread. Last time I made them, I would say they were a little bit more dense, but this time they're nice and fluffy and delicious. All right, well, we are going to get the dishes put away. Peter's putting dishes away. We have to wash and wash. It is supper time again, and tonight I'm going to be making meatloaf. Now, typically I would make meatloaf with baked potato and either corn or creamed corn, but we have some leftovers. We have some leftover rice. We have leftover um, BLT pasta salad. I think we have some leftover instant mashed potatoes, and so rather than make something new, I'm just going to make new meat fill in with all of the leftovers. We're getting ready 
to uh, go out of town for a period of time and so I don't want to have too many things in the refrigerator that I have to pop into the freezer um, to save for another time because sometimes when I put just a teeny bit in the freezer I forget about it and then it ends up going bad anyway. So Evelyn from the membership here she requested me to make meatloaf and I thought that I would make just my very traditional meatloaf. This is kind of like how my mom probably made meatloaf. I don't remember exactly, but I'm sure it was something similar to this. I do have a meatloaf recipe in cookbook number one, but that is for cheesy mini meatloaves. And it's just a little bit different. It has cheese, it has oatmeal, it has kind of like a ketchup and brown sugar and mustard sauce that goes over the top. You make them individually. This one is just gonna be in a loaf pan, basic, basic meatloaf. And this is the little meatloaf recipe card. Let's see if it'll focus on here. Come on, I know you're little. There we go. This was off of a um, onion soup mix packet from Aldi probably 20 years ago, maybe more than 20 years ago, and it has just been in my recipe box ever since. So this takes one envelope of onion soup mix, two pounds of ground beef, you can bet I'll be using venison, two eggs, water, ketchup, and dry bread crumbs. That is it. I always add some extra salt and pepper just to be on the safe side. And if you do not have an onion soup mix, here's what you can do. You can use a brown gravy packet along with some dried minced onion. You can also use the Knorr beef bouillon seasoning. It's a powder along with some minced onion. You could crush up or this water here that it calls for. You could get use hot water and then you could use a couple beef bouillon cubes, maybe three before beef bouillon cubes. You have some options. Tonight, this is what I'm gonna be using, a brown gravy packet, as well as minced onion seasoning. About a tablespoon of the minced onion with a whole pouch of brown gravy mix. Two eggs, one fourth cup water, two thirds cup of ketchup, that looks about like two thirds. And these are panko bread crumbs. I don't think it really much matters what kind they are. This just happens to be what I have. I think normally I, I don't normally have panko, but anyway, that's what I have tonight. So we're gonna mix this up. I always call this the slurry. I have my oven preheating to 350 degrees. Now my pack of venison here is only one and three quarters pounds tonight and then basically just stir it together if you're a hand person take off your rings squish it up with your fingers you can use a potato masher that works but it's kind of a pain to wash you can just stir <laughs> which is what I'm gonna do is just kind of keep stirring and eventually it will all come together Right, at this point I'm going to put it in the oven at 350 degrees for one hour. Probably it's going to go a little bit longer than that. I, I do really like meatloaf to get very done. I don't like it to still be kind of like wet. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not into that kind of meatloaf. So I like to probably overcook it just a little bit. But at least one hour, you wanna test it. And what is it for, for ground beef? Does it have to be 155, 165? I'd have to look, but anyway, you just want it to be as well done as you like your beef. It's been about an hour and 10 minutes. The meatloaf is done, it's reg registering 170 degrees. I checked my meat thermometer, it says 160 is the temp for ground beef, so it's very done. I always like to just let it rest for about 10 minutes to kind of set up. It kind of reabsorbs any of the juices. You can kind of see that there's some juices in the corners there. The juices kind of reabsorb back into the meat, making it moist and tender, and 
that's just how I like to do it with meatloaf. So we'll let this rest for 10 minutes. I have all of the leftovers out, a little bit of Caesar salad, some pasta salad. I have some instant mashed potatoes in here, some cauliflower, the last little bit of one jar of applesauce. I have some fruit, veggies, and I have some butter noodles in the microwave as well. So we're just gonna make, you know, I'm, I'm trying to kind of clear out the fridge right now is what I'm trying to do. Do you need some help, Joe? I got it. You got it? 